So this is a video as to how to download data into Excel and how to create a beta. How, how does a beta function work? And, and we'll have other videos on this, but basically a beta is, um, or, a, or, or, or a look at beta, which relates to the capital asset pricing model, is the or is a simple regression. It's a regression of one security versus another security. Um, so you look at, generally speaking, we would look at the general market and we would compare it to, say, Ford or GM or Tesla, and we would see how one stock relates to the market. And if you watch my capital asset pricing model video, you would understand how these things relate. But at any rate, let's just do a simple a regression between two different assets, just to give you an idea of how beta is calculated. So what you would do is, uh, and in this case, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to look at how NASDAQ, the NASDAQ index, relates to the S&P index. So let's go to Yahoo Finance, right, because this is a great place to start. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to do this in Excel because it's easy and you can do it at home, and it's not a very hard thing to do. Obviously, you have much more sophisticated, um, we have much more sophisticated uh statistical packages like R or Stata or SPSS, any number of packages that will do a lot of this stuff automatically for you. And obviously, if you have a Bloomberg, you can get it, you can call it up. But it's always helpful to understand how the numbers are derived. So let's look at the S&P 500 first. And that would be our dependent variable. In other words, we're going to we're going to assume that the S&P 500 is dependent on the NASDAQ. So we're going to say, well, how does the S&P 500, when the NASDAQ moves, what does that do to the S&P 500? Probably not the best a theoretical way to look at it, but the bottom line is at least we'll get a good view of how to, um, you know, how they relate to one another. You know, generally speaking, you'd want to look at how Ford relates to the S&P 500. But let's take a look at this. So we'll go to historical data. And in this case, I'm going to use um, five years worth of data. So we'll go right here. You just really is simple. You do five years. Like I said, R or uh, Stata, they'll, they'll do some of this stuff automatically for you. And now we're going to look at the weekly prices. I'm going to go with a weekly price because that kind of smooths out the noises. I feel that if when you look at daily prices, sometimes you get a lot of gyrations because of the daily movements in the market. Something happens, it reverses the next day. We see that a lot in the market. You know, I traded my entire life. So, you know, certainly speaking, you can have three or four wild days in the middle of the week, and by the end of the week, Friday doesn't look much different than Monday. You know, generally speaking, when you when you kind of spread out your data like that, you get a more you take out some of the noise. Now there are again more sophisticated ways to do that, but we're going to do it simply by just looking at weekly. So I'm going to download that data, and I'm going to get the GSPC, and um, this is going to be part one because I, I want to do this as a part one. So later in part two, I'm going to call this up and show you what it looks like on an Excel spreadsheet. So there's GSPC. And now I want to look at um, the NASDAQ. And it's easy because I could just click here. I don't have to add the symbol. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at historical data. And I'm going to look at five years again. And I'm going to look at weekly. And I'm going to apply it there, and I'm going to download that data. So now at this point, once you've done that, once you make the determination as to how far you want to go back, a Yahoo, when it does um, volatility, because that's another way of measuring this, they'll do three years. I did five years here. I used weekly. You could play with this all day long, daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, but in my case, I went with weekly, and I went five years. And these should match up. Because these are very liquid, obviously. Look at this. I mean, it's extremely liquid. Uh, they're extremely liquid indices. So you'll have this down here for you. I'm using Chrome. But you, what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to call these up. You're going to see these called up in a spreadsheet. And then we're going to see how to manip manipulate them to do the regression. So this is part one. And then we'll go into part two. Thank you.